Gaming Vault presents the 15 biggest vertical worlds in video games. Video games can live or die by their level design, presenting linear paths or open-ended environments that immerse and challenge us. That being said, there's a certain art to structuring game worlds that constantly turns skywards. We're talking about the worlds that have you moving higher and higher, looking down upon all creation in the process. Let's take a look at the 15 biggest vertical worlds in video games and why they're so cool. The Last Guardian The Last Guardian is not an open sandbox like some games on this list, but its level design is constantly scaling upwards. The sheer epic scale of the levels is apparent when trying to cooperate with Trico, even as the world's beautiful architecture continues to crumble. Even if it took a decade to arrive, The Last Guardian's gorgeous aesthetic is worth the price of admission. Assassin's Creed 2 Though towers weren't exactly new in Assassin's Creed 2, it did expand upon its movement-heavy premise in the best way. Ezio had more means to traverse Venice thanks to an expanded set of parkour moves, and it's incredibly satisfying to look down on the city from up high. Ah, the good old days when Ubisoft didn't put towers in almost every single game. Regardless, Assassin's Creed 2 felt like the realization of Ubisoft's vertical vision and felt great. Grow Up The very goal of Ubisoft's Grow Up series is traveling to greater heights to recover pieces of Bud's spaceship, Mom. You'll accomplish this by researching and growing plants, going higher and higher until you can barely see the bottom. It can get a little dizzying at times, plus the controls aren't always the most cooperative. But Grow Up presents some interesting sights from up high. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Though mostly linked to mountain climbing, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild features some impressive summits. Perhaps one of the best aspects of actually climbing up a mountain is the mix of risk and reward. There's nothing like braving the rain and limited stamina to scale that mountain. It's almost enough even without a reward at the top, plus you get to paraglide down. Just Cause 2 Oddly enough, Just Cause 2's map size is pretty close to Just Cause 3. The former wins out thanks to its increased emphasis on vertical terrain and cities. This was also the first game in the series that made the grappling hook a real joy to play around with, and it opened up traversal in a huge new way. It also didn't hurt that there was more content to play with. Skyrim I mean, if it's not the dragon riding that'll make you love the sheer size of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, then maybe traveling up a peak or two will help. What we love about Skyrim is how there's so much to see, regardless of where you go. Then there's the sheer hilarious challenge of trying to scale a mountain top on your own two feet. Grand Theft Auto V It's amazing how much Grand Theft Auto V plays with its verticality. When you're not chasing enemies up hills or driving down Mount Chiliad, you're ransacking the IAA and attempting to escape down a huge building. Skydiving, stunt flying, and other activities also tend to draw you into the game's insane heights. Xenoblade Chronicles X Xenoblade Chronicles has always pushed for a massive world, one that won't punish you with tons of fall damage. Some may take umbrage with the sheer number of fetch quests, but Xenoblade Chronicles X lets you go anywhere, further aided by the huge scales and gigantic enemies that can be fought. Don't let its looks fool you though, the world of Xenoblade Chronicles X has almost no limit. Minecraft Minecraft? Yes, Minecraft. Not only can you build way past the comfortable limits of the sky, but Minecraft itself encourages you to challenge the boundaries of building. If you want to construct an orbital elevator, and some people have, then go for it. If you want to go to the moon and challenge the beasts there, well, at least on PC, go for it. Minecraft can be pretty much anything you want, which explains its crazy popularity over the years. Dark Souls series While Bloodborne is more grounded in the dirt, the Dark Souls series seemingly pushes to new heights. Look at Dark Souls 3 in the Kingdom of Lothric, from the high wall all the way to Arc Dragon Peak. You're always going higher, even if it's just to slash downwards and one hit kill a boss. Looking at you, Ancient Dragon. Prototype Also known as the game where you can karate kick a helicopter, Prototype's verticality was as fluid as walking on the street. 
It took nothing to run up the side of a building and dive down onto unsuspecting enemies. However, throughout the game, certain levels and enemies will push you to climb higher and take advantage of your foes. Portal 2 Verticality has always been a strong design element in Portal 2's levels, though up and down can become pretty interchangeable in some test chambers. The inherent design of the series relies on elevators and forever propelling the player upwards. Portal 2 takes this to some crazy extremes, even throwing you onto the moon at one point. If that's not the epitome of vertical design, we don't know what is. World of Warcraft Like any great MMO, World of Warcraft has a number of heights to visit, like Darnassus, the city of the Night Elves built in the Great Tree Teldrassil. Then there's Hyjal, which you can fly up to from Moonglade, going higher and higher. Similarly, there are peaks like Dunmoreau, Ice Crown, and Storm Peaks to climb, allowing for a stunning view of the scenery wherever you go. Dark Void Not only does Dark Void heavily emphasize vertical traversal thanks to a snazzy jetpack, but it also features a vertical cover system. Though the game starts without jetpacks and hoverpacks, it's not long before you're climbing through ruined ships, fighting enemies and trying not to fall into an enormous abyss. Sure, the game itself is pretty horrible. Spoiler, Nikola Tesla killed Dumbledore, but that verticality, son. Crackdown Before Saints Row 4 and Prototype made jumping around cities with superpowers fun, Crackdown was probably one of the first super cop open world games to come around. Thanks to your insane jumping ability, the world was pretty much a vertical playground, and the design capitalized on this by challenging your movement skills. Then Crackdown 2 came around and turned the series into a generic shooter. Let's hope Crackdown 3 restores it to its former glory. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.